Hello and welcome, Annie Collins here for the Makers Movement. Today we're discussing the Crafter's Edge Crossover 2 Fabric and Die Cutting System. This is a new system to me, and most likely most, most of you. This system is very interesting because it has a pressure gauge. It starts from 0 to 18 and you roll this little dial here to change the pressure of your rollers. So meaning they get closer or further away depending on where you place the, you turn the dial and place the knob too. It comes with three cutting plates. It has the base plate, the clear cutting plate, and a metal shim. It also came with a fabric cut in, uh, fabric die that for you to try out to see if you would like to try cutting fabric in your machine. Now, most of their dies are in the basic metal, but their fabric dies are colored in a darker blue or green. They have other specialty dies that are in black. Now, the handle cranks smoothly, and there's a little um, switch here that lets you put the handle up <clears throat> for storage. Sorry, excuse me. This is a slim machine when st for, for storage, and it has Velcro tabs to keep the arms up for and for storage. Now, I just cut this intricate die just before I started to show you it cuts the, even the most intricate dies and I didn't use the metal shim. Here's the, the manual that comes with it. It explains to you all the dies that it will take from the fabric to the metal to the bigs or Accu quilt dies. You adjust the, the, they give you a guide here to adjust your pressure settings and it lets you know how many layers of either fabric or leather you can cut at one time. It does the same thing with the regular metal dies that we use or commonly use. It tells you what the setting should be and how many pieces of, of paper you can cut. It has in, it does embossing and it costs it cut, of course uses cuts steel rule um, dies. It, in the front it gives you the explanation of how you can set up your sandwiches. Now, uh, unlike other machines, this machine you must put your dies facing up and the material cutting it cuts up. Except for your steel roll, you must put the material you're cutting on the bottom and the steel roll on top because you only use the clear cutting plate. That's what I'm trying to point, but you can't see on this that little thing. So, for today's project, we're going to use the Alpaca Your Bags Stamp and Die Set. And this is such a cute set. It has um, four images, well, five, six images, I should say, because it's little tiny snowflakes, and four little um, sentiments. It has the coordinating die for the alpaca, the hat, and the scarf. And then it comes with bonus dies, which are the mountain tops, the little mountain snow caps, and a snow bank. I'm also going to be using the pull and reveal circle die set. Now this co consists of six dies, two circles, one lever pull, the two slits for putting your lever through, and um, a semicircle which is for your handle. This is all part of the Maker's Movement dies and stamps set. So let's get into the project. I stamped my um, images with some memento black ink and I'm going to use both Copic and um, Spectrum Noir markers because I do not have, I have the full set of Spectrums but not full set of Copics. I'm going to color in semicircles all around to add texture to my alpaca and I'm going to concentrate a little bit more around the muzzle and color to give that dimension. I will place the caps on screen and if you can't quite read them because I move too fast or they're like that one isn't so clear to see this RB1 I will have all of them listed on my blog and the blog list will be listed in the description below I'm just you know, I will be using three colors for the alpaca but for the rest of the images I only will use two they are so small it's difficult to put layer three I mean you could but it's it's not really worth it. So here I am. I continue to color it in that little semicircle just to add that texture of his full wool. I 
just want to give him a squish. I imagine him to be warm and wiggly. Okay, now back to the card. Um, if you haven't heard of the Makers Movement, you can join the movement, as they say, by going to mymakersmovement.com. You can also find them on social media, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Pinterest, and here on YouTube. They have a wonderful line of dyes and stamps, with, and stamps with coordinating dyes, like this one. This is a stamp and die set. And they have individual dyes that have either action, like the one we're gonna use today, or just the basics like we normally use in different shapes and sizes. What I do like about this machine is that all the things it can cut from in the fabric, under the fabric pressures, it cuts from thin cotton to, head, to faux leather. And it tells you what setting to put it on and the layers. I mean, thin cotton, it says it'll cut seven layers at one time. When you get to the paper, it tells you it cuts from thin craft paper, like um, construction paper, size cork with a liner, burlap with a backing liner, chipboard, and cards, heavyweight cardstock. This machine also does embossing and it, with a rubber pad that you will use um, with your two plates, the bottom white plate and the cutting plate. Um, it also uses the thin laser cut stencils with the rubber pad and you can emboss with that. And plastic, of course, plastic embossing folders, which we all use or have without an embossing pad. You don't need the embossing rubber pad. Now those are sold separately, does not come with your system. Um, it also cuts steel rule dies, such as your bakes and your AccuCut uh, quilt and go or any other of those other AccuCut. It can cut the, the bigs two layers at a time and the AccuCut, AccuQuilt, sorry, um, one layer at a time. They give you troubleshooting in how to troubleshoot, how to contact them. The customer su um, support has been great. They get back to you whether it would be your phone, uh, email, Facebook, on their website. It's been phenomenal. If I have any questions, they've been there to answer them every single way, every step of the way. They do sell all other accessories for you to use with your cutting system. You have you can have replacement pads, and um, they also have the rubber embossing. They have these little pick tools for you to take out any little pieces that didn't come out of their dies, and tweezers, my favorite because I have big fingers. So this is a very interesting. Thing. I haven't used it to cut fabric, but I want to, so that'll be my next thing. I'm gonna be work. I'm gonna try to put out another video with another card, and I'm gonna try to do a fabric project with it, just to see how it really does. This system is new to me. I'm not sure how many people know about it, and they're just working on that get to know everyone promote campaign. And I was approached to give it a try. I said, why not? Now. There are some things I'm not quite sure how long it'll last, like the Velcro uh, manure. Maybe in the, in the future they'll change that. But if it starts to come undone for me, I'll just either reattach more Velcro or put a little strap of my own. Those things don't bother me. But most of the time I leave my die systems, cutting system like this, open on a rolly cart next to my desk. So I don't see myself opening and closing it. So back to my coloring. I'm finishing up here my hat and my scarf. And then I'm gonna go in after I've done all the coloring with some jelly roll pens. I use a black one, a white one, a black one around the eyes, and the white to deep, put a little, you know, sparkle back in his eye there. It's when you color it kind of goes out. And to add a little bit of um uh highlight. I also use the white gel pen to fix any boo-boos I did with my coloring because you know sometimes I go outside the lines. Not often, but I do here and there. With the sparkle pen, I I got a jelly roll sparkle pen and I used it to add little sparkles to all those tiny little things on his little uh, blanket, his scarf and his hat. Here I'm going back around the eyes and the nose and the mouth to make sure that it looks nice and dark. What you saw me doing there is sometimes my jelly roll pens don't get a quick 
start, you could either rub it on a piece of paper, but I find if I rub it on my finger, it starts up right away. Um, I live here in Florida and sometimes the humidity kind of gets to the pen. So just like I said, rub it, and get it going. Here's the thing with this die cutting system. You must put, you align your dies and you have to put the, the cutting upside down. So your dies go upside down. Normally we put them face down, cut on whatever we're cutting, pull it through. You just flip it, it goes right through. Now I'm pushing it back and forth because I'm doing it on my craft desk with all my extra lamps for recording. So I rolled it back, but one cut, it went right through, it cut perfectly. I throw every, all my extra dies on that little magnetic photo board. It's just a photo uh, holder, an acrylic photo holder and a magnetic sheet because I lose my dies. And I cut all, here I cut, I cut my mountains, my mountain peaks, and I had cut a snowbank previously from another project, so I saved it. Here we're going to cut this, the pull and reveal dies. I'm just using the circle, which is going to be our flap, and I'm going to center it on this bl light blue cardstock panel. I'm just using this as placement at this moment. I'm using the little, these are the two little slit dies that come, and I'm going to place them, I'm going to eyeball it. If you're not fond of eyeballing, by all means, please pull out your ruler and, and do it. Sometimes I do, today I wasn't in the mood for measuring. So I just kind of follow the, this, this, you know, eyeball and make sure they're about the same height. You want the one on the left a little bit closer to the circle and the one on the right a little closer to the edge of the card. Not all the way because you don't want to go off the card. You need that slit there to hold your bar, that you, your lever in place. Then I'm going to remove the circle. Like I said, it's only there for placement purposes at this point. For this card, I'm not cutting into the front panel. I'll show you another card I did before which, where I did. Here I'm going to take the circle, I'm going to put it on another light blue cardstock panel that matches the one I just used. And I am cutting the circle, the pull, one of the pull levers, the semicircle, and here's the, the actual lever part that you're going to use, that's the puller part. I'm cutting that from white cardstock. I'm using a little bit heavier white cardstock for that because it's going to have the most movement. So there are our slits. There's our circle one and our, our pulley one, semicircle one. I'm going to cut this again so I have two of each. I'm adding my little hat and scarf to my little alpaca and I'm going to set them to the side. Just putting a little bit of glue. There you go. Here are our slits and I'm going on our front panel. Now. Like I said, this has other images, and I'm going to go ahead and use the two snowflakes with a little Versa Magic. I'm testing it off on the side because I over stamped it, over inked it, I should say. And I'm going to flip one stamp on one, on either side of my block so I could flip it over. I start with the bigger one to get as much of the space filled in. And then I proceed with the smaller stamp and fill in any of the gaps. Now here's my little mountain peaks. Sorry, it was a little off frame there. And I cut that from pattern paper. And as you can see, I was testing ink and I accidentally dropped my ink pad on my corner, but it won't be seen when the finished product. I'm pulling out the little uh, pine trees. I'm gonna use Evergreen Bow from Tim Holtz Distress Oxide. And I'm gonna stamp five in total little trees. I'm gonna do three to the right, two to the left, I'm using my snowbank here just to get an idea, a gauge, where I want it. I don't want it too low where I lose my trees. I'm also going to do my trees in a little bit of a zigzag uh, formation because trees grow at different lengths and I want it to look a little more natural. As natural as a flat tree can look. <clears throat> and I'm going to then, again, lay my snow down, make sure it looks good. And now I'm going to start adhering everything. And I got a little ink on my snow, so I use my sand eraser to get rid of it. Cleaning my fingers, making sure I don't get snow on my snow pe my snow peaks. Going to use my tweezers. I have these really thin tweezers. They're actually quilling tweezers, and they're really good because they're really thin and they're great for holding small objects. 
here I put a small drop of glue and I spread it out with the nozzle because I don't want it oozing all over the place. I repeat the same thing on the other side and the little peaks are perfectly matched with those with the mountain peaks it looks it I mean it fits perfectly it looks great so now I'm going to adhere this panel to my front panel which is my little mountains here I'm just using some uh, Zyron Mega Runner to put it down there I'm keeping this part uh, flat onto the panel however my snowbank I will add a little bit of thin foam it's low profile foam I've had in my stash I believe I got that from the Dollar Tree <laughs> trying to use it up I have I want to get a different one but it works really well now here I slow this down a bit so you can see do you see that t-bar section that's our stopper we're going to follow the score lines that are on there and we're going to fold once pass the stopper towards ourselves or away however you feel most comfortable and then you're going to go on the other side of the t and you're going to fold again. You can use your bone folder to get that crease really well. That's uh, what I do here. I go a little off focus because I'm away from the camera. And now we're going to flip our card over and we're going to insert the small portion, making sure it stops right there. That stopper's there. And now we're going to in insert the other side through our little slits. See why I say you don't want to go all the way to the edge and then this is what happens when you don't you're not patient enough to wait to flip it over you pop it out. So this is a quick how a quick demo of how it's gonna work. You pull on the little lever and that little flap opens. It works better when you have more uh, heaviness on that little tab. So I, these are the two circles I cut that match our paper our card stuff and I'm going to sandwich that little tab between them. Now, you can leave it exposed on the back, but I like the better finished look of keeping it covered. So, how, another thing is, you can cut your arm pulley the same color as your cardstock. It gives it a more finished look, but since I have a snow, some white here and there, I, it's not much is going to show. It didn't bother me. And it's, I know it's not going to bother the person I'm sending it to because they live in a snowy area and they love the snow. So I put a little bit of liquid adhesive here. I find it easier to line things up with it. And I just put it there. I place it, push the little tab into it, trying to keep my fingers out of the glue. And I'm going to sandwich, basically, that little tab between the two circles. Pressing down and aligning it. This is why I like the liquid glue because you, it gives me a little wiggle room to align everything perfectly. And then I'm going to use my bone folder to kind of press it, make sure it's on there nice and firm. Fingers, a little bone folder action. And now I know it's on there. Now we're going to show. I press it down so you can see. I'm going to pull on it and you'll see it pop. There you go. Back and forth. Now you have to do it a couple times to get it working and now it's wiggling up and down don't panic we haven't finished it yet you'll have to add some foam to the back to keep things from shifting all over the place those semicircles we cut that's what I'm showing you have to put foam on the side to keep it from shifting those little semicircles we cut we cut two well I cut two um, and I'm gonna do the same thing I did with the full circles I'm gonna sandwich that little tab that's sticking out between those little semicircles. I'm going to try to stay as close to the edge of the card so you have a nice pull, you know, place to pull that little tab. I didn't stamp a pull here or, a, or an arrow. I'll do that before I mail it. It's, you know, it's not that hard to do. You could even place a sticker if you prefer. If you're worried about stamping on something that's already put together. See, now practice. It's easier to pull because you have the little tab and you just keep pulling it and play with it and the more you do it the easier and smoother it gets now i'm going to place my little alpaca on the front but i have all these cute snowflakes everywhere but not on our little um pull tab area or a little pop pop area <laughs> so i'm going to add some more of those snowflakes using the versa magic 
I'm going to put adhesive only towards the top of the alpaca. We don't want to adhere his feet because then it defeats the purpose of the pull. But now, don't do like I did. And put the alpaca in crooked. I don't know what's wrong with me. I can't get anything straight today. So, here we go. We're going to add the adhesive to the back. The adhesive I'm using, it's double-sided foam adhesive from the Maker's Movement. This adhesive, oh, this foam adhesive comes in sheets of four by eight, and they come four pieces to a package. They also sell these Versa dies, which these are, I received the Versa die rectangle set, and basically it cuts through this foam. Now this isn't thin foam, this is a nice dirty thicker foam, and it cuts right through them, and it um, this cuts into rectangles, which is perfect for making shaker cards, or you can then cut them into strips for for doing other things that you may need. You can also use these, of course, to just use them as rectangles for your cards, you know, nest, since they're nesting. Uh, they have other wonderful versa dies and shapes, and other shapes, I should say. So now that we put our foam on either side of our liver, that'll keep it from slipping back and forth. Now I'm a little off camera here because I cannot line this up unless I'm right on it and I didn't want you to see the back of my head. So now you see it's flipping smoother because I have the foam keeping it steady. I'm going to add my sentiments. I'm going to add one on the top and one on the inside. I pulled up two of the sentiments from the stamp set. I pulled warm winter wishes and alpaca your bags. I'm going to ink them up with some <clears throat> Versafine on tuxedo black, no, onyx black, <laughs> okay, there you go. And I'm going to run it through with some small um, dies to cut my little labels, my little sentiments, label. I don't know what I'm saying today. And I've added a few little snowflakes on to coordinate my sentiments so that it wouldn't look so, okay, this is white things hanging out there. So it now blends in a little better. And here I'm going to put my other label, but I'm going to run it, I'm going to put it flat. So I'm going to start by sticking it in there, and I, you want to make sure you're within the pop-up feature. If it sticks out, it defeats the whole pop-up surprise. So I barely tap it with my, um, I put Zara Mega Runner, and I barely tap it just to keep it in place. I get it where I want it, and then I push down to make it permanent. The warm winter wishes, I use a little, again, a little bit of that thin fo uh, craft foam. I'm going to use some Nouveau drops, uh, glitter drops in White Blizzard to add some dimension or texture to my snow, some glistening, and to the trees and the mountain peaks. Um, I always start off on a scrap piece of paper, keeping my nozzle straight up and down, make sure there's no air, and I'm barely putting putting pressure because I don't want a lot of snow texture. I just want a little bit as well as on my snowflakes and centers. I'm not looking for globs of snow, just a little streak just to give it that glistening. I will open the lever here, the tab, and add a little bit to the mountains and I can add more once, you know, I leave it open once and then let it dry. Then close my little tab over. And, and I barely put I put such light amount that it dried actually pretty quick. Not like when I used to do a, a drop and leave it overnight. So there you see, you can see a nice light texture. gives it just enough to give that. And it picks up also on the alpaca. Remember, I used that glistening, uh, that little glitter pen. It coordinates. Again, this is the Crafter's Edge Crossover 2 Fabric and Paper Cutting System. And the stamps are from the Maker's Movement, Stamp and Die Set, and cord, uh, um, Action Dies, which is the pull and, oh boy, I'm going to say it wrong, I don't want to say it wrong. <laughs> the Pull and Reveal Circle Dies. And this is the card we made today. And here's a card I made the other day. See here, I have the lever, but I have the alpaca, I cut the circle in the front panel, and he's popping out from behind the mountains. And his little scarf is just hanging over. The crossover, I, I, I found it to be a very fun and easy to use um, die cutting system, and I hope you give it a try. Please join D 
the Makers Movement at mymakersmovement.com. You can stop by my blog, which I'll put in the description below, and if, see anything that you might have missed, um, any information like the colors of the markers and such. You can find them on all social media, the Makers Movement, um, from Facebook to Instagram and here on YouTube and Pinterest. I am also on uh, Instagram and Pinterest and so forth. Uh, you will see it scroll up in the credits. I would like to thank you for stopping by today and spending some time here with me. Please, if you like it, subscribe, hit the like button, and I'll see you. I will talk to you again at another time. Bye. Thank you.